Welcome back to the channel. Um, if you're new, I've been documenting my journey to go from that IT help desk support space all the way to a network engineer. And life update, I've done it. Boom. I've been wanting to create this video for like last couple of weeks. But yeah, I have done it. Yeah, it's like a weight off my shoulders, honestly. I'm finally in a role that matches up with who I am and where I'm at. I'm an engineer, dealing with networks, innovate, solve, fix, improve, grind. Yep, yeah, I'm happy. I'm very, very happy. I'm gonna to talk to you about the whole journey in brief from start to how I got here and what I really did and how I've done it so maybe someone else can sort of take something from that. Uh, I'm going to make a nice coffee first though because it's like 30 degrees here in Sydney and my new apartment doesn't have aircon, we've just got fans so I'm feeling it. So coffee first. Right, let's talk. So, I am not just a network engineer, network operations engineer, very fancy. Quickly, we will start from where I've begun. Now, my aim from like two years ago was to become a network engineer, get back to being serious in a career and use, try and use the experiences that I'd had in the past and put them and focus them on that path of becoming a network engineer. And yes, I've done it. So, uh, my previous background, I spent time in the military, dealing with signals. I spent time on the railway, in a telecommunications role. And then I've had, probably due to a combination of moving to Australia, dealing with visas and off the back of COVID, had about four years of kind of temporary jobs that weren't really good. They were kind of shit. So look, some of you might say, oh, you didn't start this journey completely fresh. No, however, a couple of years out of tech, you know, in this day and age, push you back a lot and could be seen as you kind of need to start fresh again. Don't forget, I actually didn't have any certifications from those previous, previous roles that I mentioned. So yeah, everything that I'm talking about and the journey that I've documented, I feel even if you have no prior technical experience, there's going to be some similarities that you can pick up from this because I've had to grind through the bottom, you know, to, 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 to get here. So I had those previous experiences and, and, and jobs, military, a uh, bit of telecommunications, um, and I've always been really a bit of a fault finder, a troubleshooter, trying to fix things. That's just the type of person that I am. I've always been messing about with engines and stuff like that. Um, and just, I just like looking at like big, pieces of engineering like ships bridges and I've just always been a little bit like that so when I came to Australia I was like had a few crappy jobs and it really got me down and like I just felt like I feel like I've done some good stuff in the past but it doesn't really count for anything now and and I had an accident at work and a job that I didn't want to do and I, I had back surgery and I just thought okay enough is enough I'm going to focus everything I've done and everything I'm going to go out and get to become a network engineer. So I started studying my CCNA about, um, let's have a think, 16 months ago. Yep. Started studying my CCNA in 2024. And I actually took a step back and then started started studying the Cisco CCST networking. This is the entry level certification for networking. And at the time I was working in an insurance job. Um, so I was, I actually really enjoyed the job as well, but I just knew 
looking down the line, planning ahead for the future that, you know, I need to build my career somewhere else, which was tech, which was the network engineer role. So I was working in the insurance job and I was coming back in the evenings and study, study, study. And after about a month, I gained my Cisco CCST networking. And uh, I thought, fantastic, I, I feel amazing. Um, and then I actually started looking to apply for help desk IT support jobs. And whilst I was doing that, I started to study in literally the next day for Cisco CCNA. And it was about five months into my Cisco CCNA uh, and I was still applying for jobs and I was also networking on LinkedIn. I was also offering my services voluntarily at um, schools, at churches, youth groups, charities, whoever it may be for basic IT support. And uh, then I landed a job as a IT support technician um, for the Australian government um, at one of their military bases. So <clears throat> I got that job and I also spoke about in the interview how I would be passing my CCNA in the next month. Um, I spoke about the projects that I was doing on the side at home because I'd bought a load of physical home lab gear from somebody who had done CCNA and this gear just consisted of some old routers, some old switches. I got some scrap wood and knocked up a little um, like a little little server rack and then I start just getting hands on a switch and what it looks like and stuff that I just overlooked in the past in my previous jobs but now I was really focusing on how to you know how to configure these and how what goes wrong on them so I did like three projects with alongside learning my CCNA uh, one of those was a uh, configuring spanning tree one of those was about uh, security and one of those was all those combined with like vlans basically so simple projects documented and yep yeah, ready to talk about in an interview and it got me a job as it support so i started it support and i was in that job for about the best part of one year i think i was in it for just over just over 10 months and in those 10 months I managed to get stuck in I learned a lot about hardware I led some projects which um, sort of propelled me into learning Python again I'd not touched Python before and I gained my CCNA and I also I advise you to do this I got extremely involved with Linux. So I started learning Linux from week two. I actually took the decision, or my team were using Windows on their operating system. I took the um, decision to delete my Windows on my computer and install Linux Ubuntu. And hey, I, I just started learning Linux and then I went on to learn Linux servers. So within sort of the best part of a year at my IT support job, I was doing stuff with Python. I was good with Linux. I was all over sort of hardware issues and learned a lot more about hardware. And yeah, just generally just picked up a lot more skills. And I also started studying for the Cisco DevNet Associate. Now this is gonna be rebranded as the Cisco CCNA Automation. And I am just about to take the exam on that. However, just learning that alone before taking the exam, I have been able to build skills in Python, Ansible, understanding what an API is and what they do, how to test an API, um, things like Docker, things like different scripting languages, HTML, JSON, like XML, like, yeah, just a lot, a lot of things that I've taken away from just learning it, um, which I'm really pleased about because I've not even took the exam yet. I've downloaded the Boson simulation software and I'm getting through it. However, studying has taken a bit of a battering with 
the whole change of jobs and just learning like what's on the job and stuff like this and as well as trying to study at night and there's a lot, I, I've been really tired recently as well because it's all a big um, you know change and you have a bit of nervousness and just stuff like that and obviously we're coming up to Christmas very soon so busy time of year however as I was approaching the sort of one year in the IT support job I felt that I had start to plateau and I just couldn't see how I could carry on in a sort of upward trajectory of developing new skills, doing more. Um, I could only see it leveling out and sometimes just becoming quite tedious. Nothing new would really be happening and I, I got as much out of it as I could but Hey, I, I reckon like if I'd have stayed another year, I, I, I don't reckon I would have actually gained much personally for myself. So I took the decision to start applying for some other jobs. And now I wanted to apply for jobs with much more responsibility. So definitely stepping into the network engineer space. And that's what I started applying for. Now I will give you this tip. My goal has always been to become a network engineer. And even when I do become a network engineer, which I have, I want to finesse my craft. I want to be as good as I can. I want to help and educate other people. I want to pull, uh, I want to be able to work with other departments, you know, dev team, software teams, and know enough about what they do and tie it into my job and just, just be the best I can, yeah. Um, and to do that, I truly believe you have to act like the role you want to become. That is my only advice for this entire video. If you want to become a network engineer, even before you get your help desk job, you need to act like a network engineer. If you're in a job and there's no networking pros like prospects, guess what? Make some. Map the network out. Ping the DNS. Trace through what, you know, path the packets take to reach the internet go on into the server cabinet look at the documentation you might not need to it might not concern you but guess what i'm going to do it i'm going to know about it i want to know about this network how do our pcs actually connect to the internet i don't know i don't know oh go and find out how many switches are there is there a core switch you know is it fiber is it ethernet have a look do this this is what network engineers do I've been acting like a network engineer way before like um, I got anywhere near this role. So you have to do that because some people really don't understand that you have to sell yourself, but also you have to take the leap. You know, if you want to be in this sort of like entry level middle ground thing, because it feels more comfortable, then people are going to, you know, you have to be a bit brutal and if you want to be a network engineer act like one so that's me and the advice um where was i yes yeah, so i started applying for a couple of jobs network engineer jobs and i constantly reviewed my resume constantly reviewed the cover letters that i was sending out constantly reviewed the skills that i said i was you know capable of um, on my resume and saying actually you know is that is that okay? No, no, it is because I can do this. I can do that. So I am going to put that down. So really like look at your, re you know, review your resume and stuff like that. And I was, um, yeah, applying for network engineer jobs. I managed to, it was really, really quiet. It's hyper competitive, really quiet. Didn't hear anything for about three weeks. And then I got three phone calls for a network engineer role, which I was really, really happy about. One was at a, managed service provider an msp one was at a hospital and another one was working in the iot space and the iot space is a uh, internet of things uh, which deals with sensors and all sorts of stuff um, that transmit data and goes over a network um so yeah three interviews and i went all the way on each interview and I, when I get an interview, I know it's going to be good because I feel really confident. I don't feel like I've like 
you know, try to pull the wool over anyone's eyes. I feel like if they were interviewing me, they, they must like something that I've said on my resume and I'm going to make sure that they, they know more about it. So really, really happy with every interview that I had. Um, but when I learned a little bit about the jobs, I found out that the hospital job was absolutely chaotic. Even the process of getting back to me, um, they got back to me a lot, but it was just like, oh, we're just sorting this out, we're just sorting that out, we want to get you on board. Well, just make it happen then. <laughs> it was just, it was, a, it was very chaotic, and I found that healthcare IT is chaotic um, from speaking to different people. Managed service provider, network engineer role was great, really nice people. However, was just not enough money at the end of the day for the skills that I can bring and the type of person that I am. And that is a massive contributing factor to whether or not you're going to take the job. So I've not put all this effort in and hard work not to be financially rewarded. So had to turn that one down. And yeah, so I've um, gone for a, I work for a company now that deals in the IoT space which is all to do with sensors that monitor um, loads of different stuff. And then that information is sent through radio signals, which is what I did in the army, which is fantastic. And then over the network via IP traffic. So I'm now an engineer combining RF, which is radio frequencies and IP traffic together, uh, which I'm super, super happy about. I've got a lot to learn. Um, a lot to get to grips with um, as quick as possible uh, but yeah bring it on I will give my absolute most to the team and just try and be the best engineer I can for them so dead happy with that guys if you believe it enough it will happen I promise you like I'm now focused on the DevNet exam and I am now going to be pushing content out on how to just get there if you want to get there and the extra things you can do and the things that I'm going to come up against as well and the things that I'm going to be learning so I hope you didn't mind me talking all this time straight belt feeding you but it's um, all quite raw and fresh and just an update so I will leave you with that and uh, look forward to the next video and um, yeah go and smash it see you later